The applications that we write work with data in some way, shape, or form. In fact, the primary reason of why we write applications is to work with data. Uh, that data could be text data, it could be numeric data, and many times, in our case, it's going to be HTML data. So we need some way to store and retrieve data so that we can use it within our application. And we can do that with variables. Variables are boxes of memory that we can store and retrieve information from. So if we wanted to get an HTML element within our application, we could store it in a variable, and then later we could use that value whenever we needed to. Now, before we can use a variable, we have to declare it and give it a value. Uh, that's what we have done in every one of these statements, but let's just look at this first one. And by the way, this is the triad example, so feel free to follow along. Uh, we have declared and initialized this variable called my variable with a value of 3. Now, we could actually do this on two separate statements. We could do var space and then my variable and then semicolon and then we could give my variable a value of three now this takes two statements to do though and there are times when we will want to do that but for the most part we just want to stick with one statement here now we use the var keyword to uh, tell the JavaScript engine that we want to create a variable. A keyword is a special word within a language that means something to that language. In the case of var, we want to create a variable. So we create a variable, we give it a name, and uh, names can have, uh, or they can start with any letter, an underscore, or a dollar sign. But for the most part, uh, we want to use just a letter, and we also want to use camel casing, and that is we start our variable with a lowercase letter, and if the letters after this first letter are part of a word, they are all lowercase. So we have my, the word my is all in lowercase, and then we have another word called variable here. So we want to uppercase the V in variable and then lowercase the rest of the word variable. So we kind of have a camel hump here, hence the name camel casing. So any other word that we have, like I just changed this to two. Now our code will fail because we are looking over here, but we'll change this again. We have three words in this variable name. We have my variable and then two. So we want to use lowercase again for my, use an uppercase v in variable, and then use an uppercase two, or uppercase t in two. So we have added another camel hump. So that's camel casing, think of camel humps. And this is a convention, it's kind of an unwritten rule, but it's one that most JavaScript developers follow. Okay, so we have assigned a value of 3 to my variable, and we want to use this in some other computation. So we are going to do that by creating another variable called my variable 2 and then we are using the value of my variable and adding 2 to it. Now what we actually do here is we create a copy of it. Well, we don't actually do that. JavaScript does it for us. Uh, Numbers are called primitive data types in JavaScript. They are the basic pieces of information that we can use within the language. And primitive data types are said to be immutable. Immutable means that we cannot change the value after it's been created. So we have created a value of 3 and assigned it to my variable. Well, we cannot change this value at all. It, it is there. Now, we can destroy that value and replace it with something else, but we can't actually change the value of 3 stored in here. So, in order to preserve this original value, JavaScript creates a copy of that value every time we use the my variable variable. So, here we are, here we use a copy of 3 and then add 2 to it, and then that's 5. And these are comments here. Anything that appears after this slash slash on this line is considered a comment. So I could actually add some code here to change my variable to 10, but this will not execute because it's all a comment. And if you use a fancy code editor like I'm using, I'm using Microsoft Visual Web Developer Express, it color codes things like uh, keywords are color coded in blue. Uh, just regular code is in black, 
strings are in red, and comments are in green. So we can see that my variable equal 10 is in green. So anything that is in a comment is not going to be executed. JavaScript will just pass over it. Okay, so we have a value of 5 contained within my variable 2 by using a copy of 3 and adding 2 to it. And now we want to use the, the value within my variable 2 in the creation of another variable called my variable 3. Now we are using text data here. This is actually called a string. And so we have a string that says the value is, and then we have a plus sign, and then we have the copy of the value of my variable 2. Now up here we used a plus sign for addition. We had a number here in my variable, which was 3, and then we added 2 to it. Now we can't really add a number and a string together. So JavaScript sees this, and it converts the number 5 to a string. So what we actually get is the value is, and then we have the concatenation operator here, and then another string value of 5, because JavaScript converts the number to a string. So we actually get the string that says the value is 5. Now this can be confusing, because some languages don't use the plus sign for both string concatenation and for addition. Many other languages do, so it's really just up in the air. It's nothing unusual for JavaScript. So it may take a little bit of time to get used to, but uh, that's just how it is. I don't really see that ever changing. Uh, some people consider that wrong, some don't. I'm somebody that doesn't because other languages do it as well. So it's not that big of a deal. Just remember that if you have a string value and you are using the plus sign with it, anything else to the right of it is going to be converted into a string. Okay, so we have a string value within my variable 3. It's actually the value is 5 here. And then we want to display this in a dialog box within the browser. Well, we can do that by using a function called alert. This is a built-in function, uh, so we don't have to write any code for this function here. It's just built in and we can use it. And we pass it the value of my variable 3. Now this is, whenever we pass a value, we are saying that we are passing an argument to this function because this function needs some type of data in order to work with. So in the case of this code, it needs to work with something to display within a dialog box. So we are supplying that value to the alert uh, function. So whenever we open this up in our browser, we will see a dialog box that says the value is 5. So let's do that now. Uh, let's go to lesson two, and we'll open it up, and there we have our dialog box, and it says the value is five. So that is how we use variables within our application, and in the next lesson we're, we are going to expand upon that and combine variables with functions.